For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes recapping week nine. Week nine is going to be a short week as we are entering uh, Holy Week. So for probably Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, if you have chances to get into your classroom and collect the data, uh, we'll want to try to do that. At this point, all of us should be well into our classroom observations. We should have officially chosen our participants, and now uh, we should have begun collecting additional information. Again, classroom observations are going to be very important to get some of those in as soon as possible, but any other forms of data or types of data. Remember that interviews can be from teachers, from students, from administrators, from parents, depending on your research objective. You can collect any kind of information from teachers and or students in the form of text, audio, or video. Make sure that you're recording all of your classroom observations, preferably video, and also recording any interviews that you have. Um, make sure that you are triangulating the information. So anything that you're finding out, if you're observing things, or if, let's say you get some information from teachers that's very important or relevant to your research questions, we want to make sure we're triangulating that same uh, those same concepts, that information, so that we're getting different perspectives, that we're not relying on one source of information, but we're collecting it from a variety of sources. Remember that content analysis or document analysis can come in the form of text, audio, or video as well. So keep that in mind whenever you're collecting data from, uh, from teachers and students primarily, but even administrators or anyone else that you're uh, coming into contact with that's part of uh, the participants of your study. For the method section, I want to give you some suggestions on what I would begin developing probably next week, week 10. Um, but I think it's important to give you an overview at this point, eventually what you're going to be including in the method section of your research paper. Remember that the method section should be approximately 500 words and should include three sections, participants, instruments and procedure, and data analysis. Each of those three sections should be, I would use those exact headings according to uh, APA. I would use a level two heading uh, for each of those three and include one paragraph in each of the three paragraphs. So in the first paragraph, the first section called participants, ask yourself, who your participants are. So you're going to want to describe your participants. We want to not use their name, but we want to perhaps include their titles or responsibilities and or their rank. Include any demographic information that relates to your study. It's very important that you're only including information that's relevant or that's useful in the way that you are going to be analyzing your information. So the demographic information that you might consider includes the age, experience working at a particular school or overall years of experience, gender, the groups that currently the teacher is working with, or perhaps groups that the teacher has taught in the past, what are the ages of those students? What are the levels of those students? Typical group sizes, et cetera. You can also include any school information. So is it a public or private school? General location, we, want, we don't want to provide the exact location, but you can name the, the city, for example, or if it's close to a city, you can mention that. What's the size of the school, the mission and the vision of the school, et cetera. Also, you can include any kind of social economic uh, information that's also relevant to your study. We want to include in this first section also your rationale for having chosen your participants. Why did you choose these participants? What was the reasoning behind it? And we want to include also in this section any permissions that you used or that you got from the participants, an informed consent form, or any other special permissions that you were uh, that you got 
to uh, protect the confidentiality of your participants. In the second section, we want to include the instruments and the procedure. We want to describe the instruments that we used. If you are using an instrument that you got from another study, we want to include a citation where you mention that you're using it uh, and where you got it. And you can also say if you modified a particular instrument, we want to mention that as well. Again, describe it and make sure that at the end of the sentence where you are describing that instrument that you include in parentheses at the end, C, Appendix A, C, Appendix B, and so on. We want to list in the appendices all of your instruments, but in the order that you're mentioning it in your paper. So just follow the alphabetical order. The first time you mention something in your appendix, well, we're going to start with A and then move on from there. As you are listing or mentioning different instruments, you'll just uh, continue through the alphabet. Organize the paragraph chronologically, that is, in a way that would facilitate someone, another researcher, who would be interested in replicating your study. So think of uh, all of the information that you include in the whole section of your method, not just in the instruments and procedure. What, did it, what information would they know, need to know to replicate your own study? The third section, the data analysis. This should be one paragraph. And uh, we're going to talk in greater detail on April 12th, 2024, when we have our next whole group session. We'll talk uh, a little bit more specifically about uh, how to go about going and analyzing all of your data. But in this one paragraph in this section, we'll need to talk about primarily thinking about qualitative research, how you coded the information, how you categorized it, any software you used, what was your process for coding and categorizing and extracting basic themes from your qualitative research that you collected. Also, some of you might also need to include some degree of quantitative data in the form of creating tables and figures, maybe showing percentages and frequencies. This is going to be descriptive data, numeric data that in some cases are going to be very useful to complement or to support some of the qualitative information that you also receive. This is going to be an example of a mixed methods approach, and many of you may find it useful or needed actually to incorporate both of these types of data. So this is going to be our focus for week nine. Make sure that you're getting in the classroom observations as these are potentially the the parts or the types of data that is going to require that you're working very closely with the teacher in terms of scheduling, making sure that there's good communication between you and the teachers so that there's no confusion or uh, challenges getting into the classrooms and getting those recordings and observing uh, the classes that you need to answer your research questions. Make sure you always use instruments whenever you're observing. Again, those instruments are going to be listed in the methods section. And also make sure that you, as I mentioned before, that you're recording the classes in addition to your uh, observations and your field notes. So I hope this helps. If anyone is facing challenges, make sure you're reaching out to me. Contact me as soon as possible if you're not sure what the next step is in your data collection process. Make sure that you are getting the data that you need to answer your research questions. And if there's any ever doubt, any doubts in as to what you're getting and whether or not it's relevant to your research questions, again, those are things we need to be talking about uh, as soon as possible. So I think we'll stop there. Have a good week, and we'll talk to everybody soon.